Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, <clears throat> just to respond to the question of are they, is it climate change that it rained this morning and suddenly mainit na sa hapa? Just a survey who will say yes, raise your hand. Nobody? So it's not climate change. Okay, correct. So climate change is basically long term. And when it comes to spatial, it's really large. Like for example, the Asia Pacific region. When I say long term, it could be 15 to 30 years. Just to uh, give you an example, El Nino, is it climate change? Who say yes? Oh, La Nina. El Nino, La Nina. Or are you just shy? Okay, parang, no, parang, climate But it's not. It's a phenomenon. But prolonged El Nino, you, you notice the prolonged El Nino, like before we experience every 20 years, then every 10 years, then every 5 years, now every, uh, every other year. El Nino, La Nina, El Nino, La Nina. With that change, we can say, yeah, it's climate change. Okay? So my, my presentation will be talking about the planting a mangrove somewhere in uh, Bali, in Bali, Indonesia. So I'll be talking about uh, first the concept of mangroves based on the title. Mangroves, perhaps three parts, mangroves, then blue carbon, and after that, you know, the challenges and prospects in uh, blue carbon governance. Alright, so, uh, This is the outline of the presentation. Uh, basically, I'll be discussing about the basic concept about mangrove, blue carbon estimates, and the uh, carbon potential, carbon stock potential of mangrove plantation, and what does it mean when we want to, I would say that, elevate it to international climate change agreements. Just a moment because it's not moving here. All right, now it's moving. Okay, just recently, two days ago. Now, have you have you seen this or, or have you heard this over the news? Duterte, President Digo, is planning to visit the building rights. Okay, and to launch a study. And if you're going to look at the location of the Philippine or the Philippine rice, we call it Philippine rice before it's Ben and Rice. No. It's just adjacent to one of the most pristine mangrove sites in the Philippines. That is somewhere in Isabela. No? Uh, not well studied, but there is one research organization, uh, if I remember it, the Mabuaya Foundation. They're starting to document those mangroves. Very difficult to go there. So hopefully, uh, so hopefully the government will be able to not only consider you know coastal marine or the marine resource, but also the adjacent mangrove areas. All right. But before I give you know the thorough discussion of the basic concept of mangroves, let me just walk you through to a very short research journey I had. No? Well, I started or became interested on a mangrove research way back 2003, right after I graduated. No? That's with the Environmental Forestry Program. And uh, my mentor back then uh, were Dr. Torres uh, Pulin and uh, Dr. Rodel Asco. No? If you know Dr. Rodel Asco is one of our academicians. So that, is, that photo is, uh, was taken in Pagbilao, Queso. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this, it's not visible, but this is a re uh, reforestation area even before Merami na mga project on video. But this one was funded by uh, an energy company. Okay. 
If you're going to ask me what happened to the to the seedlings they planted later on in the future, because we came back after how many years? Six years. So later, I'll show you. And this one is also in Pabila, somewhere in uh, uh, where was that? Dandaga. No? These are mangrove uh, associates, basically beach forest, thorny no? aroma and sapini. Yeah, that was happened after they planted 2005, 2003, and 2005. Do you think they are healthy? Tumubo naman, but if you're going to look at the step, maraming bark milk. Okay, major, major concern na when it comes to mangrove survival, ang ganyang mga problem. Ang problema dito, pag kumapit yung bark milk, it's almost impossible to remove. If you're going to remove it, mamatay bakit? Ito nga, I think I love to experience this already. Pag tinanan mo, masusugatan din. Okay, and then 2008, somewhere in San Juan Batangas, basically forms part of the the Verde Island Biodiversity Corridor, no? The top marine biodiversity site. Okay, ito naman ay along riverine, call it riverine mangroves, call it Bakawan. So in general, you call mangroves pakawan. But there are so many, you know, species. Pakawan is just one. Ang maraming pang iba. It's not only pakawan. And then Jason's side, somewhere in San Juan. You know what this is? Ito sa mga involved sa mangrove research. This is Avicenia. Very big. Like this. The stem is like this. Okay, now we also had a project funded by uh, the ASEAN Cooperation for Environmental, uh, Envi ASEAN Korea Environmental Cooperation. So I would like also to recognize the presence of our uh, Professor Emeritus and the country coordinator of ACECOP, Dr. Lopresha Rigo, is here. So we raise your hand. So this is our project in the ACECOP Philippines project. So, we took this photo in Northern Bohol, natural forest. No? Ang narapasin niyo? In front. You know what this is? Baklad. You know? Sa ginagamit yung baklad, they put the, yung mga nahuli fish na, or crabs, or you know, yung mga napulapo. Parang cage siya. Cage. And this one, yeah, favorite site yan. Yeah my uh, uh, dissertation site uh, in Banakan Island, Bohol. Monoculture means only one species. Okay. Rhizopora istylosa. Bakawan pa to. Marami, marami anong bakawan yung bakawan babae. That's Rhizopora mukronata. Bakawan lalaki. And then Sabi nila ni Bakawang Gitna. But I only know three Bakawang ba ito. But after I have spoke with one of the mangrove experts in India, Professor Katirisa, sabi niya, he said that if you, you know, if you, on a natural setting, if you find Mokronata, Apikulata, Lalaki, Papaya, then you will surely have hybrid X. Oh, iba ang galing, ang galing din ang mangroves. That's the form of their adaptation. Yeah. Yeah. Medyo explicit, but I took this photo. One of, you know, yung nalang sa panakang island. Even at the younger age, they were actually oriented in planting mangroves. Kita na nakaupo siya sa the propagules. Um, so, starting from their forefathers, 1957, mga tatay, mga able to pass that. So, I can call it the tradition. Okay? And this one is uh, not really manual, but it's an associated uh, uh, 
vegetation, the cortex, no, uh, sa diba, night of urticans. Yan, so pwede mo gawa sa night of urticans. Shingles, meron din, have you heard about that sukang sasa? No. Okay, also part of the architectural project uh, really this one in Camonin Puerto Princesa, old growth. Uh, this is actually not Bacawa, but this is Rukiria. If I'm not mistaken, Punta Botota, very deep. Makalaskas, have you been to this place? No? There are many buhay and all that. Okay, if you talk about Palawan Mangro, most probably you will uh, encounter wildlife lights of water product. Now, recently, 2016, Matanga City, this is a Visenya stand. But, uh, you know, apparently, looking at the behind the mangroves are petrochemical companies. Uh, basically, this is an energy company. Uh, they have permit. Uh, they were given permit to expand their operation. So, now we are not a mangrove, but uh, in exchange, they have a very good nursery. They can erase the mangrove city, and then they are planting elsewhere to offset the impact. So, somewhere in Batanga City. This one, um, Kasigura na Aurora, a natural mangrove, malilit lang yan. They are very shrubby because they are much exposed with the typhoon. Uh, Pacific Ocean, yeah, facing the Pacific Ocean. It's adjacent to uh, airstrip. So, uh, yung dinevelop na airstrip under the Ateco, uh, Aurora Processing and Economic Zone, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, somewhere in Malaysia. Mangroves on the left. You know what this is? India Nipa. Oil palm. Okay? This is just a very narrow strip of mangroves. Dito target na, that the Moluca Strait. But that is the mangrove areas. Acres, 100 hectares of Nipa or oil palm plantation. Okay. Down then, somewhere near the shore, ito na yung condition ng mangroves ng sa Malaysia. You know what's happening here? We call it uh, beach erosion. Okay? Sometimes you don't have to cut mangroves uh, to the forest and actually naturally may mga ganyan nangyayari. Is it because of climate change? Meron pang sea level rise or meron ano? Well, that's one one possible explanation. But the other one is really anthropogenic. No? Beach erosion is what happens if the mangrove area is connected to a big watershed. If there's a river upstream and they make quarrying, there's no or less sediment recharge. Uh, in a watershed, there is sedimentation from the upstream to put any sediments on coastal that is recharging. But if you quarry the um, sa river, hindi na recharge the coastal area, then basically that kind of problem will also happen. Okay, mawala ng sediment. So, meron din ganun mga evidences. Ito naman sa Oman. No? Uh, well, doon, konti lang species nila. This is Abyssinia. Yan yung kinakain din ng mga kamen. Okay, so. Southeast Asia, some parts of Africa, and uh, South America to Florida, nandun yung maraming mga species. But Middle East, kokonti lang yung mga mga species. Kung so, lalo na dito. Uh, Highly urbanized, you can only find patches. Okay, this is Guangzhou. Somewhere there is Macau. Okay, so, ito, data data. So, you can only find very few mangrove uh, vegetation. 
So it is rain but before it is <coughs> this used to be occupied the mango. And this one in Bali, Indonesia, uh, when we had our ITTO uh, mangrove conference, a very popular place as well for Brina. Uh, yeah. Consider mangrove, very unique. Then I the trees, go to the mangrove. All right, and then this one somewhere in Leganes, Lila. I just recently took this photo. Mangroves, and then they put this uh, wave breaker. They call it P fence, so that uh, the wave force would be lessened, and it could help protect the mangrove mangroves. Unfortunately, when they established this right away, they planted the matai. So they thought about it. What what was the explanation? Then they found out that you have to wait two years after establishment. Then you because kailangan i-condition daw yung sediment. You have to precondition the sediment uh, before you plant. Okay. Also in Iloilo, just strips of mangroves along the river. Pag tiningan yung kapila, this used to be mangroves. Uh, because of, uh, well, I'm not saying this is because of build, build, build. Walang sinasabi ka lang. It's really affecting no? a lot of construction, removing mangroves, and the way, because cutting is not allowed, they ball it. If you're familiar with balling, according to example, no? you dig and then you remove some roots, make it like a ball, then you transfer. Unfortunately, maray naman namamatay. So DNR basically halts the balling of mangroves because but once that in a galutari mangrove, the chance that it will survive when you, when you transplant uh, them, mababa talaga. So, park project killed mangrove cover in Iloilo River. Okay, ito naman, uh, when I brought my students there. So, can you raise your hands? I forget about it. Okay, so we attended the third national mangrove conference. Um, uh, this is actually, if you know her, that's a Dr. Yudin Primavera, um, uh, our mangrove expert. Uh, and beside her is a national scientist, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Atala, okay, Angel Atala. Yeah. First thing I met, yeah. I'm so happy to take uh, photo with this person, that is Professor Katerisa. When you, when you say Indian mangroves, or Indian mangroves, that's him. Yeah, And this one is Professor uh, uh, Saxena. This basically, when we had our APN workshop in New Delhi, so I talked about sustainable mangrove rehabilitation for global and local benefits. And I'm happy to acknowledge as well Dr. Lenny Camacho, who's the project leader of this uh, Now, why I posted this photo? Why I show this photo? Because it somehow makes me feel I'm good looking. <laughs> Sitting beside. No, I'm just kidding. At least I esteem the professor. And I'm a professor. I'm good looking. I'm a Joke lang yan. Okay, let's go to the mangrove 101. The basic concept. When you say mangroves, it's a forest ecosystem. Marine forest or coastal forest ecosystem. They are, uh, you can find them along coastal sediments, where there are sediments, brackish water river habitats, and they are actually exclusive within the tropic and subtropic region. So if you're going to look at the map, yan lang na yung mangrove. You cannot find mangroves somewhere in Poland, <laughs> uh, temperate zone, even Korea, some part of Japan, the extreme south of Japan, they have northern Australia, very deep to the eastern. Uh, okay, Southeast Asia, of course, East Asia, Middle East, Africa, South America to uh, South. USA, okay. Florida, and uh, it's a land use. 
land cover land is between terrestrial and marine communities, which receive daily input of water from ocean and fresh water from the upstream, mixing it brackish. And uh, some said, uh, halotitic uh, salt or uh, plants, halopite there can tolerate salt water with 12 genera, 8 families, and about 110 species, this is according to the, the research or publication of uh, Peter Sanger. Uh, they grow in relatively shallow water. Hindi pwedeng malalim. Alam nyo ba, nalulunod din yung mangroves. So with sea level rise, pwede silang malunod. Okay? So optimal could, should be like 20 to 30 cm at mean low water. And a very unique characteristic of mangrove environment is anoxic. No? Anoxic or anoxia. There's a high concentration of sulfide, ferrous iron, manganese ions, and there's reduced ions are toxic to other plants. Now that is basically why I think konti lang ang research sa mangrove. Maputi, mahirap maglakad, at mabaho. Okay? Because of this, no? there's a lot of bacterial uh, interactions going at the microbial center. This photo, I, uh, this is a Sonerantia, Sonerantia Albastan, somewhere in the port of Petapia. Bob one point five, nearly subtitled. No? I was so surprised, nag-grow sila doon. No? Masyado nang malala. No? They were able to adapt. No? Usually, if you plant other species na hindi para dyan, like for example, if you plant Rhizophora, patay yun, lunod yun. But for other species, they can tolerate a kind of that. Okay, just to give you a, a quick uh, uh, snapshots of the different types of mangroves. First, the riverine mangrove along rivers. Overwash, yeah, overwash. Just stream of mangrove. Okay. Waves come uh, to and fro. We have the coral atoll mangrove, like one of my sites in Banakon, in Cebu, the Banakon Island. There's a coralline or coral atoll mangrove. Lagoon. Lagoon basin mangrove. So you find mangroves inside. Uh, and then there are other uh, landforms there. We have fringing barrier with lagoons, basin mangrove. Okay. Connected with big watershed like the Makaraskas in Palawan. Scrub mangrove, like in uh, the one I showed. The one I took photo from Aurora and work mangrove. Okay, so far? Okay. Importance of mangroves, so many. You can actually classify them into, you know, we have four ecosystem services provisioning, protecting, cultural, and regulating. But just to enumerate some of the many values of mangrove habitats, spawning ground, nursery and nutrients for a number of marine flora and fauna, timber and non-timber products, source of food, income, no? ecotourism, like in Prina Poto, prevent and uh, reduce coastal erosion, and uh, protection against harsh effect of wind, waves, and currents. They work about 180.9 billion, according to the uh, report of FAO with an estimated value of 10,000 US dollars per hectare per year. And I would like to concentrate or focus on the last bullet that is the carbon storage and sequestration. Yeah, are you familiar with this one? A town saved by Mango somewhere in Leyte, Palopon Leyte. They said that uh, they had a strong surge reaching up to 3.6 3 meters high, but with good mango cover, that particular community was saved. So, government mandated coastal green dump. There is a pending bill uh, in, I think, in the desk of uh, Senator Bama. Uh, I don't know if it will be passed because the previous one, the minor rehabilitation bill, has been like how many years already? Seven years. Now, this one is the most recent. So, 
we don't know what would be the story. But this one, so we have that uh, policy uh, bill, but ito naman, may, medyo may konting, let's take a break, use 1 billion mangrove rehab fund, not really for planting, <coughs> sorry. But first, to renovate coastal dwellers. Because, halos na upos na yung tataniman. Yung tataniman dapat, the ideal size for mangrove rehab are basically those that they used to occupy. Ano ba yung mga yan? Yeah, yung mga fish ponds. Alright? Hindi yun sa gitna ng dagat. Less plant mangroves at the middle of the sea. It's the same, goes with the saying, with uh, less straw money to the sea. Kasi yung mga matay lang yan. So, trends of trends law and distribution. So, Asia has the largest share of the global mangroves. About 41%. And uh, Southeast Asia, among the Asian countries, is the largest. Indonesia, based on country records, they have the largest mangrove. But when it comes to one contiguous mangrove, that is uh, the Sundarban mangroves of Bangladesh and India. So in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Myanmar, and yeah, surprisingly, top 10. No? Pansampu tayo. So may, uh, in terms of uh, our management. This is according to the latest uh, uh, research of uh, Chandra Giri, uh, Dr. Chandra Giri. Okay. Mangroves are being lost globally at the mean rate of 1 to 2% per year. This is low but very serious. But it's serious. You can find countries that are not really in extreme cases. Philippines, hindi tayo. But if you go to Indonesia, extreme. Malaysia, medyo rin. Indonesia, because they're converting peak forest mangroves into wild palm. Okay. That's why two areas no, have shown the, the greatest percent loss between 1980 to 2005. That's the Indo-Malay Philippine archipelago with 30% reduction, okay? And uh, within Southeast Asia, this is the, the mangrove loss from 2000 to 2012, about 2.1%. Philippines is, hindi naman gaan as 0.5. Myanmar pala yung mataas, no? 5.5. This is based on the study of Richard and, Richard and Chris, where they use a remote sensing uh, data to analyze data. What were the causes of uh, major causes of the first stage of we have conversion of mangroves to aquaculture? Benito kasi yung trend. Over time, the people resource balance was greatly stressed. We have increasing population. That's why we need to produce for that increasing population. Aquaculture, government is spending a lot of money to improve aquaculture and expense of Converting them to mangrove, uh, converting them to fish pond, uh, mangroves to fish pond, rice farming as well, oil palm, industrial development. Okay, going now to the uh, case of the Philippines. So we have, we are actually fifth in the longest coastline, and uh, you can find nine out of two out of 12 metropolitan cities are within the coastal area. Okay? So those are nine metropolitan cities. They used to be, they used to be covered with a thick mangrove. And there's a continuous increasing population on those uh, areas. Like, for example, 286 per kilometer square. Okay. This one basically shows uh, the common mangrove stand types in the Philippines. We have the Rhizopora. They naturally grow along, along river in, or river. Abyssinia, the upper intertidal landward. So Neratia, seafront, this side of the uh, coralline substrate. Well, associated one, Nicoforticans, along also river in. And then associate beach forest. The trend 
of mangrove cover in the Philippines. Well, areas estimate about 500,000, but during those times, hindi ganun ka, uh, ka accurate. But they say, they're saying it's about 400 to 500,000 hectares. So, okay na po because of aquaculture, because of land use conversion, but from 2000, before 2010, the current slowly picking up. So we have now about 310,500 hectares. And trend is improving because of the recognition of their myriad values. So DNR continues to push for mangrove planting. Okay, so yan yung uh, latest. Uh, they're lacking money for coastal green belt uh, planting. And just to give you uh, a, a glance of the mangrove policies, well, the first line said, cutting is not allowed. All forms of cutting, may it be pruning, thinning, all forms of cutting. Mangrove used to be or initial component of protected area. We have those, uh, the pro presidential proclamation, Republic Act, and was basically in, uh, enforced by this last one, Republic Act 7161. Cutting and selling of mangrove is bad. But surprisingly, 1998, this particular ministry level, a section of the TAO, guidelines of the establishment of CBFM. Section 3 allows cutting on planted mango. So people ask me, Sino susunte? In bawang or in pwede? Okay. This one is Republic Act. This is a higher level policy. So sabi nila, we have to follow it. But again, it's very difficult to undo hindi mo pwedeng enforce because you cannot guard mangrove 24-7. Kaya sabi nyo na, kami ng internet, dapat kami mga guard. We're talking about the local communities. Philippines has about 1.6 million hectares of forest lands. Of this, 10.7% are being managed by 1,900 people's organization representing local community. And roughly 15% are situated in mangroves. And CBFM, this is the national strategy. Now, when you say when you, when you when you want to describe how we manage our state forests or our forest lands, that is true. CBFM providing access, occupancy rights, and migrant forests, livelihood uh, development projects, and many others. Okay. Now the blue carbon concept. Uh, out of curiosity. I, I, again, I search back blue. Okay, blue carbon. Sino dito nakakita ng carbon? Bakit daw blue? Okay. Blue, they said blue carbon for coastal, coastal uh, vegetation. Black carbon for Industry, okay. And what being said, green carbon for forest and terrestrial, other terrestrial uh, ecosystem. But asking, bakit may kulay bang carbon? Okay. Nakita niyo na ba yung carbon? Hindi pa ako na hindi pa. That's why it's very difficult to value the some that uh, something that you cannot see. Kaya na yung wala ko ng papakita carbon. Okay. Okay, the, uh, this is the carbon cycle, the carbon sequestration process. This is Soneratia, Soneratia. Okay, yung carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, uh, climate change 101. Concentration of greenhouse gases result to, if I put mass in solar radiation, hindi siya makakalaka, then that will result to global warming. The role of forests is to sequester carbon na hindi natin nakikita. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. And that process in elementary science is called, starts with letter P. Uh, 
photosynthesis. Yan yan. Yun lang yun. Carbon sequestration is photosynthesis. Tinayin yung carbon, then they store that carbon as it grows, natin yung carbon. For example, this uh, podium is pure wood and dry wood. This weigh about, let's say, 40 kilograms. Okay? The best way to know kung ilan ang carbon ito, you just take the half, so roughly half. So if this is 40, carbon stock would be at around 20 kilograms. Alright? So ganun lang yun. Pero, natin yung carbon. As long as it stays as a podium. But when you burn this, it will be exhausted or emitted back. Okay? So it is stuck. Sequestration is capture process. Carbon stock, carbon sequestration. So you have uh, different carbon tools. Okay? So meron dito, above stem. Then meron the carbon sequestration or stocking within the sediment. So, blue carbon basically includes the ocean blue carbon, coastal blue carbon in tidal wetlands, including mangroves, tidal marsh, and uh, secret meadows, which is the expertise of our discussant, no? uh, Dr. Miguel Fortes. So, within soil and within living biome. Okay? So, natin yung carbon, nasa vegetation and nasa soil, coastal vegetation, then we call it blue carbon. And if you're going to compare the rates of coastal ecosystem, salt marshes, mangroves and sea grasses combined, 20% greater than tropical forests. We're talking here old growth detail carp. Walang sinabi yung old growth detail carp. This is really the powerhouse of carbon. So, marsh, mangroves, and sea grasses. Oh. Three to four times. That's how you compare it. If you have one well-vegetated deuterocar forest, a fourth, ano lang yan, one fourth lang yan ang ano, ideal capacity of mangrove. Ganon ka, ka ano yung mangrove forest. This is for mango. And the major, uh, the bigger share, or the biggest stuff, basically embedded in sediment or soil. So, if you want to see the carbon stock, the blue carbon, another very rich sediment, you have to conserve or maintain good vegetation. Once you cut the vegetation, slowly, the carbon will be washed away. But now, again, pwedeng mag-cost na emission, global emission. So, according to the 2009 UNEP uh, report, uh, they noted that 55% of atmospheric carbon captured by living organism and by marine organism and between 50 to 75% of this is captured by ocean vegetated habitats. And with that, increasing you know, knowledge, research, information about the value of coastal blue carbon ecosystem, 2009 is so only 2009, that international community started to recognize. No? So yeah. A full article then is reserved for the party's commitment. No? to conserve and enhance as appropriate sink and reservoir of greenhouse gases with specific reference to this article of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. This is the main convention on climate change, which underscore the importance of coastal and marine ecosystem in climate change battle. Okay? Only 2009, 
So, yeah, na pagkita lang niya. Yeah. There are different you know, uh, carbon pools. Dito na stock. Then we have below ground and sediment. Okay. And when you do uh, bio uh, blue carbon study, uh, this basically summarizes the methodology. One is uh, you know we have some destructive something to come up with an alumetic equation called biomass equation. Because when you want to measure blue carbon or carbon, you have to determine the dry weight. And to determine it, you don't have to cut the whole tree, all the trees, and then put it in the way you scale. Uh, so you have to develop a dimetric or biomass equation. And also you have to assess the uh, blue carbon from the sediment layer. These are just the standard methods. No? So, we, I basically discourage to use the term DBH. It's basically just diameter. DBH is diameter at breast height, but that is American forestry system. It's 1.3 meters above the ground. E ang Pinoy, ang 1.3 niya, hindi dito. Sa iba dito, sa akin dito. So I call it DNH. So that's a diameter of those high. But in Maros, it won't apply particularly for this one. No? 1.3, baka lang paspa. Sometimes yung mga rizyo para, the roots grow like up to this level from the ground. Okay? So, diameter of the two. So these are some of the you know, studies we did. No? This one is on the biomass modeling. Uh, how to determine the dry weight of the standing tree. Just measure the DBH, put it, put it in the equation. Then you can determine the dry weight. And then later on, the carbon stock. These are some of the, the estimates we got from our study. Uh, 2009, for natural mangrove stands in Quezon, carbon stock is about 120.9 tons per hectare. And you have to convert it to ton CO2. This is the, the amount, okay? Kasi ito yung binibili in carbon trading, the ton CO2. Ito yung pinabali, okay? For other sites, 174, 115 to 221. Okay, the largest is this one in Pataka City. Okay. The reason why it's large is because yung mga na dito, we only measure at 30 cm. But this one, when we when we check or we measure the sediment layer, okay, yung sediment layer sa sabi dito, would be about it reached about two meters, two meters. Right in uh, Puerto Princesa, in my measurements, so my estimate, roughly about uh, 250 tons of carbon per hectare. So, estimates abroad, including the plantation. Okay. Uh, ranges, uh, estimate ranges from uh, 36.6 up to this one is the work of Bullion and uh, Dr. Daniel Murillar. So, in uh, Indonesia, 939.3. That's why we're saying four times, three to four times the capacity of the, the other terrestrial forest. So, ang laki-laki ng mang, uh, laki-laki ng blue carbon, particularly embedded in the sediment. Okay, for this one, the carbon stock of a mangrove plantation, I'm going to to show you the case of uh, Panacon Island. So, if you're not familiar with Panacon, the island between the Bohol and Cebu. Okay, malapit na dito yung Cebu, Cebu City. It's here. It's about uh, uh, 660 hectares. Puro mangrove ito. Iyan lang yung community. No? That's the community center. The rest are plantations. Some are natural, but most, lalo na ito, yung monopoly plantation. Okay, like for example, 1.5 kilometer, uh, they call it Padres Pass. Left and right, lush mangrove plantation. 
it's a successful community initiated micro development. They started in 1957, even without the support of the government. No? Multi awarded conservation because it's still part of the Seleucid Domestic Biodiversity Seascape. But, ito nga management issue. Poor touristic diversity. There is a local policy, but the local community, they you know, raise the interest, but uh, they have you know, the right to utilize wood for subsistence use. Magaling pa sila magtanen? No, we did a remote sensing analysis. This was actually published. So, na comparing 1993, those that were at plus, yan yung gains, madagdagan, and minus yan yung nabawasan. So, forest cover increased from 146.5 to 285. Okay. And there are three major types of monoculture stand. The thing, yung binawasan, yung hindi binawasan, yung say thinning, selective removal of trees. It's a silvicultural treatment to improve the density. Kapag ka masyadong siksika ng puno, what's the natural uh, effect? Tall and slender. They are tall because they are competing for the light. They are slender. Kasi masyadong maskip, no space to grow. Yung natural growth. So they be teeny. Okay, if you're going to compare thinning without thinning, diameter higher than the thin, it's matataba. Compress as thicker, balik. This one is the 30 year old. These are at the same age. Okay, height mas mataas don sa oh yeah, dito sa temperature. Now look at their carbon stock. No, uh, more than half. 55 to 63 percent of the carbon is stored in sediment. Uh, this basically construed the findings of uh, Dr. Daniel Mordiarzo and others. No, that sediment, that carbon is really rich in the sediment layer. So, if you're going to compare the slide, but significantly larger tree carbon stock were observed in tin in mountain stands, indicating that selective harvesting may or thinning may improve carbon stock production. So 408, hindi gaano ng kalayo. If you think, looking at the carbon stock, halos parehas na. No? Kasi mas malaki dito po, no? Dito naman, mas malaki dito po, no? Pero marami. So TINI could be a favorable option. It, it can produce almost similar carbon stock capacity with non-TINI. Okay, so, this is basically uh, the, the intention here is somehow provide science to revisit the policy that all forms of cutting, even a monoculture, shouldn't be allowed. With, with this particular you know, uh, findings, we can actually explore the possibility of doing TINI. For monoculture, uh, this is uh, the schematic stand density management recommendation. You, gradual, you do gradual TINI. No? And then this is the ideal stand density that you maintain 0.3 to 1.73 per square meter. And then no need for replanting, then you will still achieve good carbon stock. But what if na over team, masyado marami na puto? That's fine, kasi pwede pa rin naman replant, particularly using the correct species. No? Because you don't want a growing, aging monoculture mango, very low in ecosystem or in biodiversity and perhaps ecosystem services. Okay? Now, the last part of the lecture, I'll be talking about the prospect and challenges within the international climate change framework, knowing that we have a lot of opportunities. The mangroves that then, they are rich in carbon stock. So, ano naman ibig sabihin to? When we look at the international you know, context of uh, climate change. Alright, the UNFCCC includes coast, coastal and marine ecosystem in their article uh, section B, which states that all parties shall promote sustainable management and promote and cooperate in the conservation and enhancement as appropriate of sinks and reservoirs of all GHG. 
and countries signatory to the UNFCCC, tayo, kasama to, we are submitting annual national inventory submission. Even when we committed 70% of reduction during the Paris Convention, you also mentioned blue carbon there. But, pero, ito yung problema. No? In UNFCCC, you know, in NIS, ito yung major, how to say that, uh, we call it the land use change, land use and land use change in forestry, the only aspect that we think of. Okay? And dito sa Lulu CF, mangroves and blue carbon are not yet accounted for. So, if we say not, in carbon trading, in, you know, in, um, in showing that we are complying with our targets, we cannot really count on blue carbon. So, here, they, the IPCC should sufficiently amend Lulu CF land use, land use change, and forestry. Uh, that, that platform. However, IPCC operates or based on peer reviewed science. Hence, current scientific gaps, like for example, the blue carbon fluxes need to be addressed first and there should be hard publication okay and protocols need to be established so yan yung medyo kulang we need robust science while we have few studies documenting low carbon kulang pa rin because IPCC which actually forms the the Lucia and a lot of platform needs peer review and hard science. Okay. This one, I got this from uh, uh, one of the documents uh, where it's, I think it's in press, uh, uh, published by Dr. Fortes and uh, Dr. Salmo. Great literature, ang mas marami. Ito yung sinasabi natin, this is the hard publication, the ISI, only 17%. And perhaps, jumping to this figure, where is blue carbon here? We're, we're not yet sure because the idea, the cost of blue carbon, perhaps came in over just half decade, no? So not much study, so it's a big challenge to be able to push mangroves into our international climate change agreement. We need science. Okay, what else? These are some of the concerns as well. These are the available mechanisms under UNFCCC under Kyoto Protocol, Clean Development Mechanism. So here, just to illustrate you know, quickly, we have industrialized countries, we call it Annex 1. These are, like for example, United States, Australia. They can fund a reforestation in developing countries like Philippines. Account the carbon na nakain ng kanilang reforestation project and therefore, you know, meet their commitment. Ano yung commitment na yun? Is to reduce their emission. Uh, ito yung agreement uh, during the first Kyoto Protocol, which actually ended in 2012. 5% below their 1990 level. The level of emission 1990, they have the data. By 2012, their level of emission should be 5% lower. And to achieve that target, and I call it impossible target, because when you really, you know, be serious of cutting your emission, you will be closing down your factories and other uh, industries. So, one of those, ito ka, clean development mechanism, you know, funding a reforestation in other places, okay, in the present However, there are some see, issues, like for example, additionality. Simply, how much carbon is being sequestered as sequestered as a direct result of CDM transaction? It should be additional. When you talk about carbon stock, carbon sequestration of mangrove vegetation, very low. Mabagal maggrow ang mangrove. That's why hindi ganon kalake as compared to sa sediment, right? 
So, with that, it's very difficult to establish additionality. Lalo-lalo na kung ang mga protocols and methodologies to measure changes, lalo na rin doon sa sediment, are not yet available. When you say, when you say protocol, there should be based on hard science. Okay? And one is space time. In the absence of afforestation or reforestation project scenario, you have no project versus weak project. Okay? Leakage. This is your CDM project. So, sabi niya, dito mag plant, you have to protect this for carbon. But the local communities, instead of cutting there, sabi bawal dyan, you have to protect this for carbon, they move elsewhere to cut trees. Then that is leakage. Okay? So, it's another issue. And permanence. How long? How long is the project? In transaction time. Okay? Kasi after the project, micro plantation that were established may, may be utilized or put in the forest again. The other one, the other platform is the red. Reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation. So deforestation, basically, decreasing cover. Degradation, you may have cover, but very low quality. Okay? So, forest quality. Like, for example, biodiversity, pumaba. That is degradation. And uh, we have this red and red plus. Red is just mainly protecting forest for carbon. Red plus protection and planting. Again, for carbon stock. Okay? That's the difference between red and red plus. So, like, for example, protecting mangroves, at the same time, enrichment planting to further improve uh, mangrove stock. But again, there is one concern under this platform. We call it the voluntary or the BCS, no? The measurements. It's quite similar with CDM, the additionality, the, the baseline, the leakage. It's very difficult as well. No, science is not yet available to measure in the entire na habitat degradation. And it's basically form parts of this particular requirement. The measurement protocol, the reporting protocol, and verification protocol of greenhouse gases. So, in sum, um, mangroves has very huge economic and ecological potential for carbon offset. Just a quick computation. Uh, FAO, according to the report of TNR, submitted the FAO, we have about 356,000 hectares. Considering a then conservative estimate, no? I mentioned a while ago, this could reach 900, but just 200, 200 tons carbon per hectare. We can, uh, our mangroves has about 261.3 million tons carbon dioxide. And if you're going to put a price tag using the voluntary price, carbon pricing of about 3.1 US dollar per ton. Our mangroves worth about, it's conservative estimate, 26.7 million US dollar. A very big amount. Worth conserving. Huh? Sometimes you have to put the price tag so that our policy maker and decision makers be able to know Magkano nga ba ito? Di ba? Unless sabi mo, marami yung mga hayo, marami wild, dahil marami puno. Still, secondary pa rin yan. Ito ang superiority. But if you put something, kung magkano yan, it's really worth conserving. So what should be done? You should continue to provide science. That means more collaborative research. And while waiting for that blue carbon, uh, no, blue carbon offset project to be set up, we can explore other schemes, no? conservation incentive schemes, like for example, payments for system services, tourism enterprise. Like for example, what they are doing here in in uh, Kalatagan. Yeah. Few more slides.
โอเคแล้วว่าเนาะมากรบอกพี่โอเนี่ยเรียนนี่ Coming um, from this particular community-based project, and also this one, in the Gansu Lima. This one is LGU Lab, as under the municipal environment and natural resource zone. Uh, popular place for mangrove planting of nearby universities and school, and they're also having having this uh, venue for uh, mangrove awareness. And this one, very recently. From my friend in Panacamayla, this is an individual initiative. You patent Pascalina, so he invested you know, some of his money for you know, establishing a resort. Now he jet ski as a jet ski along the groves, right? So I think that's all. So thank you very much, and I would like to thank the following uh, uh, institutions: Metro Manila Commission for the grant, OBCAA. Circa for co-hosting uh, this uh, lecture and all other um, institutions who funded. So thank you very much. And, uh,